Dave Vellante, and we're live at uh, Sapphire now in Orlando. This is uh, SAP's big customer event, uh, about 17 or 18,000 people here, I believe, and this is uh, SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage of Sapphire. Now, this is our third year at the event. Uh, this is theCUBE, where we bring you all the information at such events. We bring you the smartest people in the ecosystem. We extract knowledge and share it with you, our community. And we've got uh, two guests here, Bernard Schulzki, who is a vice president with EMC's Solutions Group, welcome. And uh, Satinder Sethi, who is a vice president at Cisco. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, and uh, good to see you guys. So we're here at Sapphire, it's a great event. Um, I was saying earlier to one of our guests, we're used to these technology events like EMC World, we'll be there next week, VMworld's a, another one. Um, you know, Cisco's got a big event, very technology focused. This is more of a business focused event, isn't it? It's, uh, what do you think of the vibe here? I think I would agree. There's business focus, but I, I've seen actually, this is the first time I'm attending an SFR event, and it's a good amount of technical data as well. Yeah, yeah. it's a nice mix, it's isn't it? It's a very nice mix, yes. Yeah, and uh, supposedly Hasso Platner's coming by uh, later. He's extremely technical, and Vishal Sikha is, of course, the CTO of, yes. uh, of, of SAP, can you know, talk tech with the best of them. But, um, so Bernard, talk a little bit about, um, you know, we had Prasad Rampali on earlier, and uh, we've had him on a number of times. Uh, talk about what you guys are doing here and the specific emphasis you have around solutions and how Cisco is involved. Yeah, so actually our cooperation with SAP is a new team is running around following up the, the joint MOU and the strategic cooperation ship that we are doing with SAP, with VMware and so forth. Uh, we are focusing on two topics really. One is HANA, we should not be surprised. Uh, the other is actually the journey to the cloud, how to get our customers moved to the cloud in the best possible way. I mean using test infrastructure technology from an uh, server perspective, I mean Cisco is the peer lead here as much as ourselves, but also looking at the, the software needed, which is the landscape virtualization uh, management uh, system. So um, now, are, are you are you talking about what do you what can you tell us about HANA? Um, I asked this question before. Somebody said, "Well, we're not quite ready to talk about our HANA certification, uh, but everybody's talking about HANA. So, what's your HANA play?" <laughs> What you can talk about is what you can see out on the on the service marketplace of, of SAP, and uh -huh. what you see there since May is a joint certification, actually a Cisco-led certification with, with our infrastructure mm -hmm. that's there. We've not seen an announcement yet. That's Cisco privilege to do uh, in, a, in a certain time. So I mean, we're, we're done. I mean, we, we've made it. I mean, we are there. We are, we are the scale out ready. We have a solid roadmap to go beyond. So that's the tolerance, which is a big topic, which is uh, we, we, we are here leading. We should be heard more. So this is what we're doing right now. I mean, we're, we're following the customer needs. I mean, everybody loves HANA. They want to look into it. So we keep the guys here for good news. Want to use it in, in a mission critical way. And then it's great news for them as well, which we are responding to. So Satinda, I, I wonder if I could yeah. ask you some questions around, you know, maybe start with the strategy. So Cisco's relatively new to the server marketplace. Um, I was skeptical. I go, I'll, I'll admit it. Uh, I didn't think that, I didn't understand it. And, but it's very clear to me you know, it's coming into focus now, the strategy, um, particularly with, 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 with VMware um, as, a, as a way to sort of enter that marketplace, but, but try to change the way in which people think about infrastructure. Talk about the strategy and, and where you've come from and, and where you are today. Sure, sure. So um, this was not new to the data center, as you know, right? So we've been shipping uh, network switches, SAN switches into the data center for a while. Sure. Right. Now, um, as um, as basically we brought the unified fabric to the market, this was early 2005 when we started conceiving the notion of unified fabric. Um, we also saw a huge need in the market for a very differentiated compute architecture, and the reason was there were customers who were basically buying servers that would not fit their requirement, but more so just because of the applications that they were running um, and the fact that they had to uh, look at three to five year cycle and they would buy extra capacity. They were buying four socket system instead of two socket because they wanted access to additional memory. They weren't able to deploy VMware virtualization in production because they didn't have network visibility into what the VMs were doing. So looking at all those challenges and the networking knowledge that Cisco had, we basically conceived on the idea of unified computing system. And as you can tell, the differentiated architecture that UCS is bringing to market, especially in terms of stateless computing, where you've totally abstracted the state from the compute itself. So it doesn't really matter what application I'm running at what given point in time. And this was conceived in 2006, delivered to the market in 2009. Mm -hmm. And today, three years later, if you look at it, we've got 11,000 plus customers. We're number two in the Blade server market in three years in US. 
we are number three globally. So it demonstrates that how customers are looking for a very different value proposition for the compute architecture which is still available to deliver. And obviously, as we move into this space, the next stop for us is how exactly do we run the application for that? And that's where HANA comes into play. So if you look at some of the capabilities that HANA is trying to drive is faster response time, information available instantly, being able to meet business SLAs, which is exactly what GC is providing the line. The agile infrastructure that can be scaled out or repurposed at any given point in time, and being able to deliver the performance that customers are looking for from HANA. Yeah, so it's been a <coughs> about a six-year journey now. You're saying, we go back to 2006, you guys saw the need for horizontal infrastructure, infrastructure to support applications across the portfolio as opposed to purpose building for a single application. One of those would be SAP, <laughs> right, is the, the one that you, you probably still have many customers saying, no, you know, I'm going to build a brick wall around my SAP, mission critical. Talk specifically about you know what your both of you, your experiences are within the SAP customer base, particularly with respect to the, 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 the cloud infrastructure. Sure, sure. So I if you look at it, you're absolutely correct. Why do customers want to build a brick wall around it? Because what they want truly is they want a guaranteed SLA. They want their they want the quality of service. They want guaranteed bandwidth capability. They want guaranteed high availability. Now, if you look at the traditional platform, the only way it was going to deliver that is by providing dedicated high availability for the contract and creating the brick wall around it. Because the application is tied to the hardware. You could go into a data center today, you walk through the rack, all the racks, and you will actually say the name of the server by the application is running. Because we're very close to the cloud. We're shifting the way we do the cloud because we're still trying to compute them in the cloud. But at the same time, we can't compute them in that order because we need to talk about the cloud for an application. So we can the quality of service, the bandwidth, the scalability, all of those small items are driven by such a complex application. And that's the reason why we're seeing the adoption of SAP Exchange, because the majority of the customers are not, at this point, are not buying any CSO or sure they're not applying application until after we've created it, then we go back. They're looking at their three to five year horizon, and they're saying that they want to see their time coming from multiple applications. And what do I need? I need a super high infrastructure that is not dependent on one application in my hands. That's exactly what we're very much into. Because I can guarantee that we're ready to deliver for the customers that we're helping to build a file so Bernard, a lot of, of your emphasis in this business would have to be on proving out that you can simplify SAP deployments, right? So uh, yeah. Can you share with us the progress that you're making, any metrics, any milestones? I mean, talk a little bit about um, the, you know, what you're seeing in the marketplace. Okay, so, I mean, we have, we have been in business for a while, so I think we, uh, it's a few miles to add more SAP. So, exactly what we're doing, I mean, the, the mission critical uh, customers are really asking for uh, the savings, you know, 100% uh, cloud infrastructure, specifically with some of the mission enhancements here. Um, we also see that, you know, software deals with the cloud provider. about it. 
Now, with yeah, them yeah. becoming a database vendor, they are getting as close to infrastructure as you can think yeah, of. Right. Now, this is a very natural process, but it, it still feels a bit new to Credit Day 10. So, what we are, I mean, we are working with the guys who have understood it and so forth. So, what you can expect there is, is a process to see software coming out from SAP as a pillar, but integrating with, with other system management software as well. That makes the promise of flexibility moving SAP systems from your one private cloud to the other to the public cloud as per policy you can only like you wish in reality. So we do have a roadmap, or SAP has a roadmap that we attach to. And I think there are good things to be seen about this. I mean, SAP is going to speak about it in the near future, I think. So it, it's good stuff coming it's, up. It's interesting to watch the moves on the chessboard over the last couple of years. I mean, not only, not only Cisco and HP, that's a whole other discussion, but but you know, Oracle's acquisition of Sun, that makes SAP a much more attractive partner to a lot of companies, EMC included. Um, and you're seeing, you know, the stars align in a lot of cases. SAP going out and buying, you know, Sybase, getting into the database business. And, uh, and it's interesting, and a lot of innovation going on. You know, you're hearing it today. A lot of talk about mobile, um, an incredible amount of talk about mobile. What does that mean from your standpoint, Satinder, from Cisco's perspective? What, how, what's your mobile strategy? Well, from a mobile perspective, I mean, that's, you know, with the data explosion that's happening and ability for people to access, you know, any any information from anywhere is obviously front and center for, for Cisco, right? So we are uh, working on, um, you know, several different initiatives in that regard, mm -hmm. uh, both from a bringing the desktop capability to the mobile platform, you know, any device, for example. There's a whole VXI initiative around it. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not, but mm -hmm. it's a virtual uh, experience infrastructure, extremely successful in the marketplace because Cisco is one company that can actually tie um, the, the data center, the borderless network, and the collaboration pieces to the front-end consumer. And that's exactly what we're bringing to the market. So we'll continue to evolve on that. There are specific technologies that we're working on to deliver video even better than where it is today to make sure that people on the mobile side get the same experience that they're used to in the real world. Excellent. All right, gentlemen. Well, listen, thanks very much to, to you, both of you for coming on theCUBE and, uh, and sharing your SAP experiences. Good luck uh, well, out in the marketplace. Dave. And, uh, thank you, Dave. and uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be right back. Keep it right here after this word from our sponsors.